Hello everyone, welcome to the Green Minded Podcast with me, the hairy one, Victor De La Casa, and my friend, the bald one, Matthias Gelber. Matthias, the handsome Matthias, say hi to the folks. Hi, hi everyone. Hi Victor and belated happy birthday. It was your birthday. Did you get my special birthday gift for you, Eco Green Minded birthday gift? I, I- I did actually. It it, it went. Uh, it, it arrived on on Friday, if I'm not nice, mistaken. Nice, nice. Yeah, just in time with just local in time. postal domestic and, delivery. And and uh, and uh, I opened it up on Saturday on my on my birthday. And I, in fact, I have it here. It's right here. Wow, wow. <laughs> the box Amazing. got a, the box got a little little flattened because of the shipping, which is you know. Which is fine. That's that's a common thing. But it's it's right here. I haven't tested real... it yet. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't tried it I yet. I hope your I hope your wife isn't getting jealous. <laughs> no, I don't think. Nice, uh, uh, I don't think my woman got. won't would mind at all. You know. Uh, in any case, good, good. It's it's a little it's a little big. I would assume, given that it's I I think it's XL, but given that uh, Christmas is coming, so I'm not too worried. You know, like in Christmas, like we gained the weight. So sure, this sure, thing sure. has, a ha- I'm going to be able to use this one for sure. And are Thank you, you. Thank you. very conscious of the eco aspect of it? Did you have a good look at it? I haven't actually taken a look at what, what, is, what it is made of, except for it says organic cotton, free of toxic yes. chemicals, making your skin healthy and radiant. Down there, exactly. making it, exactly. you know, delightfully be... <laughs> soft, and you're protecting Mother Earth too. There you yes, go. Yes, that's right. You'll be radiant <laughs> with this beautiful piece of organic cotton innerwear from my old friends in Malaysia, Nucleus. Ooh. It's a Malaysian company. It, Can you believe it? This is it? from Malaysia. Imagine that. Yeah. If you normally guys... people would yeah, expect yeah, this kind of product to come from US, Europe, yes. like, you know, avant-garde, eco-conscious product. But it's Malaysian. It's a Malaysian brand. You know, it's quite amazing. I, I they wasn't actually expecting decided, that. Yeah. I wasn't they decided expecting that. that if yeah, they do the run of the mill inner wear, they're competing with everybody else, high volume, no margins. Let's go innovative. Let's create yeah. an eco conscious brand. And it's exactly. a great product. I've been yes. wearing it since the last five years, man. Not wow. this one that I sent over to you. <laughs> It looks new but though, brand, so so I'm not I'm yeah, not too yeah. worried. I'm not too worried consider, about it. Consider yourself lucky. I didn't recycle one of my old <laughs> pieces of uh, nucleus innerwear. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, like if you want to if you want to check them out, uh, they have a website www.nucleusshop.com. That's N-U-K-L-E-U-S-S-H-O-P dot com. Check them out and and. Help the planet with organic underwear. There you go. The real deal. Yeah. The real deal. So, uh, just to recap, we've had uh, a pretty good uh, pilot episode as well as the second episode. So far, our, our reach is going up. We, we currently have, I think, like around 170 or going to 100, 170 uh, subscribers in our YouTube uh, page, which is awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And... Almost a thousand now in terms of views. So that's let's keep it up. Like like everyone, like uh, keep supporting us. Help our channel grow. Sub, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. That'll be awesome. In fact, like sure. I have uh, two comments here from the last episode, which I, I will read at the end of the ep- uh, of the show. So check our channel out and and share share to your friends. Like uh, a lot of yeah. people are really interested in this kind of topic. Uh, go ahead, Matthias. And let us know what else you want to hear about. Mm -hmm. What are the burning topics for you on the green environment sustainability front? We can always adjust. If there's something really hot coming up, uh, like the planet is burning, that's always hot, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, But in your area where you're working, in your country, uh, a real important topic, we might be able to address it. Let us know. Share with us. We're always happy to chip in. Uh, be interactive with us. 
we're still a small community, so you might get a very personal response mm -hmm. to your question or comment. Go for it. In fact, like in our Patreon, uh, we included like a you know like a certain uh, donors can have a specific community with us where we can do a one-on-one -on -one session with the uh, with the with a group of uh, you know like maybe ten people or something. Uh, also, like we have our LinkedIn page, so don't forget about that. Check it out. Uh, if you have events yeah. you wanna you want us to speak uh, at your events. Our LinkedIn page is there. Uh, the link is in the description. Get in touch with us, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch back with you. What about that sure. one? Sure. Yes. And uh, I'm sure, like, uh, now that, uh, you know, like, 2020 is a crazy year anyway. Uh, I, I won't say why, but everybody knows exactly what happened this year. <laughs> Perhaps one of the worst years in my entire existence. And... Uh, what are you talking about, Victor? I had one of my best years in Did my you? entire life. You know, no, I, I, I don't I meant, know. I meant I like mean, yes. I, I didn't I mean knowledge. I, I didn't it's mean been, that it's worse yeah. in a you know like in a very negative way. I'm sure like a lot of people would agree with me. This year kind of sucks. Not a lot of travel, which is great for the for for the planet. Anyways, like me, I'm I'm a homebody type of person. I prefer to stay at home than travel every week or something so mm. it's cool in, in that sense but yeah one of the things that really uh, pro you know pardon the word but suck is the fact that not much to do really nowadays like you just stay at home uh and you just go out uh, for shopping although recently i went to the mall and i was surprised at how many people are actually out there and uh, it's ridiculous sometimes. But the last uh, eight months, I have been in the mall twice. I've been in for mall absolute once, yeah. essential yes. uh, stuff. Uh, I haven't been. I have been shopping three or four times. Um, I mean, it has to do with the fact that we don't have a car. I haven't had a car for the last twenty years, and there was the mm. temptation to get a car. My wife said, "Hey, maybe we need one now." But we, we just outsourced our shopping to friends with a car. And basically, we gave them extra petrol money and, yeah. and money for their time. So we haven't really done the shopping ourselves. It's a question of organization. Yes, it's a question as well to have willing friends. But there's a whole new industry uh, popping up around this. And we have seen that here in San Pablo City. Mm -hmm. We have a local company now that does home delivery. You just order in bulk from them. They put it all together. They deliver it to you. I mean, these things exist now and uh, things have changed. And I would say, yes, it's been a very tough year for the economy, for people, uh, yeah, especially exactly. those people without jobs. Uh, I, I mean, I, I really feel sorry for them. And we need to try and come up with new ways of creating sustainable wealth and income in times of crisis. Exactly. But I have realized not traveling makes you more efficient. I can do more stuff now. I can spend more time with the family. Mm -hmm. So let's look as well as the positive sides, the, 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 the learnings that we have exactly. made, the innovation opportunities. And, you know, I hope we can finish <coughs> this year not just with the negative impact of all the crisis that's been surrounding us, but with the positive opportunities for innovation, recalibrating, realizing that time we spend with a family is beautiful. It can be low carbon footprint. The fact that, and my biggest environmental impact as a speaker, as a trainer, as a consultant has been the travels that I've had. So my carbon footprint this year has been much lower. Okay, our electricity bill has gone up at home because we're working from home all the time. We're spending time at home. But it can be beautiful as well if we focus on the essential beauty of being together with the family. I think you ex explained it uh, far better than I could, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, like like I said, like I, I'm not going to say – I'm not going uh, to put 2020 down. But it is absolutely different than previous years. Uh, the new normal is, you know, like it, it, you can have cabin fever. You can look at it that way. You can suffer from cabin fever just being mm. stuck at home. I've been at the mall only once. And, I'm, I'm, and, and with the number of people in, in the mall that I saw, I'm just thinking, 
uh, with December coming, Christmas and New Year, imagine, uh, you know, especially here in the Philippines where it's very festive. In North America, it's yeah. not so much, right? Uh, North America, Christmas is dead. You walk outside, nothing is going on. Nobody, no cars, nothing. And that's why there's a big uh, Christmas time is usually a, a, a very hot day. Uh, what do you call that? Like a critical day. For, it's it's family for, time. I mean, in it, it Europe, is, it's it family is. time. You don't but, you don't spend time in the mall. You're but, at home with your family. Exactly, you which is other which is, families, which is different here in the Philippines, where mm. a lot, you know family time is also spent uh, outside the mall at the the carnival. That kind of Philippines is very festive, and and we love our Christmas. And I'm just not sure how Christmas is going to change this year, given the the circumstances that we're on. But I was saying, I I, I don't know how to say this, but. One of the things that I noticed, like I said, in, in North America or in Europe, Christmas is dead. If you are all by yourself, and this is, it, this is something that, you know, if you're by yourself, you have no family. Like in my case, I was, I'm an immigrant in, in Canada. So my family is in, in, in the Philippines while I am all alone in Canada. If I don't have friends, it's going to be a really, really lonely Christmas. And I'm just oh, happy... Yeah. That that you know, like my friends, uh, they're they're some of the best uh, out there. They treated me like family, which is awesome. Beautiful. And 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 it goes. You're a nice the, guy. You're a nice guy, I am. Victor. So I am. what do you expect, right? I am an you awesome. Know, you'll make friends everywhere. <laughs> I'm a likable guy. I went to Europe this uh, last February, and I tell you, man, like a lot of people, you know, like, I I I'd be at the subway or what do you call this, the, the train station, and people talk to me and and i i hit up uh great friendships with taxi drivers and and common folks that's that's my thing and i like you're that. the man uh hopefully uh, it doesn't i happen am. to me <laughs> maybe i'm the the you know scary looking uh german uh botak, calbo, with, without the man, hair and uh huh? you know they they don't feel maybe i don't ooze out the same connection friendliness that you do i mean i remember mm -hmm. when we met in subic at the sustainability conference you were one of the friendliest and most talkative uh, people there Aww. and as well some someone that actually knew some stuff about the <laughs> subject <laughs> we had a lot of people there I sitting know, there eh? not knowing what was going on yeah it's you like, at least that you know i had some some real good questions to ask i even That's i even want to walk i i, I yeah, even want to walk <laughs> we're like that was we were funny. talking in the in, in the what do you call this the loo the the bathroom over there and <laughs> yeah and I, are you still reading the, the book or have uh, you given it away no already? no it's, it's still here it's still here but it's, it's hidden now but uh oh, yeah. yeah like mm. but the thing is what i got wasn't really a book i don't think that it, it looks like uh what do you call this like a, a collection of uh previous work that has mm. been done and <laughs> and i was hoping that i i would like see something there about you know like uh matthias Gelber, but I, I think there was a because I was in a rush also. Remember, like I, I I left early, right? Like you were inviting me for stay a while for a couple of beers, and ah, uh, well, I have to hit off because I have to go back to work. Right? So it it was very and en not entertaining, it, very informative, it, very educational, and I really enjoyed it. And Matthias was there. Matthias is an awesome host. So just letting you guys know like Thanks if for the plug man hey of, yeah of course i i think it was a it was a a, a fun event we had a lovely dinner yes and uh you know the the late richard johnson who organized it uh, oh, uh to cre hear. credit to him yeah. uh you know he he was really the one that brought us all together and he left a legacy with that he, without he, him he passed uh, away this year yes man he passed away he passed away no, yeah, not yeah, because yeah. of the the the, the pandemic no, chance. no, no. Oh, okay. He he had some other health complications, but uh, he left a legacy in a way. You know, yeah. it wouldn't if it wouldn't have been for him organizing this event, uh, we wouldn't be here having the Green Minded Podcast. So we, we met yeah. through him, yeah. and uh, thankful to him that he he did it. And it's the same with another project, GSX, mm -hmm. uh, that I'm involved in, the Global Sustainability Exchange. If it wouldn't have been for the late late Richard Johnson. Uh, it it I wouldn't be in there. So you know, sometimes you know, 
especially this year, we sa said already, you might be feeling down. Uh, you might mm. be wondering what impact are you making, but sometimes you bring people together and without knowing it, maybe you'll never see it, but they can create yeah. something by themselves together really uh, without you being involved, yeah. but you just made a connection. So if you're out there and you have that gift of connecting people, bringing people together, Go, continue to do it. You know, there will be fruitful outcomes from it. Even you might not directly see them. We need those connectors. We need those people that bring yes. other people together. Exactly. And if it wasn't for the late Richard Johnson having organized that sustainability conference in Subic, uh, even though it was challenging for him to get the funds to make it happen, he pulled it through. And as a result of it, we are now doing this green-minded podcast isn't that a beautiful story it it's is a, a legacy story. that he has left yeah yeah imagine that anyways uh today's episode is the state of uh what how, how did i wrote it down 2020 the state of environmental challenges this year with the lockdowns and everything i believe uh you're very passionate about uh about this uh topic especially when it comes to air quality and uh, carbon uh, footprint as you know like uh, we've had the, uh, here in the philippines for example we've had a couple of weeks of uh, you know uh, general lockdown basically and it created some changes noticeable changes in the environment but after it was lifted uh, you can see the drastic uh, impact it has in in in, in uh, you know at least here in the philippines where we are located Matthias. All over the world, really. All over We've the world. We've seen exactly. the same pattern all over the world. Yes. During the lockdown, when people were restricted to being at home for the first time, maybe since, you know, the, the um, industrial revolution, mm -hmm. where we have seen humans being the source of a lot of the pollution. Yes, you know, certain companies with vested interests have been sowing doubts about the scientific reality of climate change as a, 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 a human induced activity for obvious reasons and stuff like that but hey we have seen it during the pandemic once mm. a lot of the human activity especially transport yeah. inner city transport and even some industrial activity in cities or outside cities was reduced or completely uh, um, put to halt suddenly the air was super clean it Suddenly, is. people could see the mountains again. Mm. And we have seen that in, in uh, Dhaka, Bangladesh. We have seen that in Delhi, India. But now, after those restrictions have been lifted, it's back to normal. But we have seen, we have learned one very clear lesson. It's our human activity, our mobility, mm -hmm. our manufacturing activity that is the main source of that inner city pollution, full stop. It was so clear during the lockdown period but then when we look at the big picture in terms of what long-term impact it has had we see it has had very very little long-term impact uh the bbc just reported a couple of days ago i think it was the world meteorological institute that mm. made an assessment the global impact as a whole is very very minuscule of that in terms of total co2 emissions mm -hmm. and co2 emission predictions long term however an article just came out yesterday, again, I read it on, on, on BBC, yeah. that with Biden now going back into the Paris Agreement with China, having announced that they want to be achieve zero net zero carbon by 2060, yeah. we see some major trends, some major changes that will potentially help us to get closer to the Paris Agreement of maximum two Celsius temperature increase i mean two celsius is already very scary and very dangerous i know i know uh, so let's hope for, uh, that people will push even more aggressively to reduce the uh, rise of temperature but at least there is hope at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. not necessarily triggered off by the lockdown but by long-term strategic decisions but the lockdown should teach us a lesson I was uh, watching a couple of uh, other documentaries wherein they were charting the like a video, like uh, they were tracking down the CO two emissions of, of each uh, you know around the world. Remember last year we had that uh, rainforest fire in in Brazil, right in the oh, Amazon. We, we have it. We still we have still it, have uh, it happening. You know, I yes. mean, deforestation 
is but, still uh, rampant. But but that's not the only thing that happened. There were forest fires in Canada, forest fires in the United States, and then you have the one in Australia, which is also major at the beginning of this year. So they were they were measuring all these uh, in, in graphic. Okay, like you can see the 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 emission of CO two coming out, and including the airplanes, you, you can see them all. But during the lockdown, like the the first couple of weeks of March, it just went like as, as though there was no activity in the planet. When when they started these lockdowns, even starting from China, like there's there are already a lot of changes going on that are, that are noticeable in terms of uh, carbon emissions in the planet. So so the point is, it it doesn't take long. You know, like it doesn't take long for humans to also clean up the planet when you really think about it. Based on the current sources of emissions. But if you look holistically uh -huh. at the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, that's not something that yeah, you can well, clean up overnight. Yes, of uh, course. That is yeah. not something that immediately goes down. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think the pollution that impacts our health uh, immediately is the PM 2.5, the sulfur dioxide, the nitrous oxides, mm -hmm. the ozone at ground level. So the pollution at ground level, if we halt industry, if we halt mobility, goes down to very, very low level. Mm -hmm. So our human health immediately has a positive impact from that. And if we believe the World Health Organization statistics of what that pollution, how many lives it costs us per year, it actually costs us apparently more lives than uh, uh, the pandemic has cost us. Mm -hmm. So this is a very interesting question when we would be asking now, uh, shouldn't we put more priority on uh, air pollution and the human uh, health impact and death toll that it has, and then um, other um, human behavior related diseases like uh, what we are facing with the diet that humans have, the lack of mobility. I saw some statistics the other day uh, from a, a medical insurance company that was looking at uh, why are people going to the uh, hospital here in the Philippines. Mm. And when you look at them, you see it's high blood pressure, yeah. it's uh, strokes, yep. it's... Um, you know, the diabetes that people have, those are diet related issues that uh, contribute to a gigantic number of premature deaths. So, um, wow, if suddenly the air pollution level goes down, will that help us to save a lot of people from premature deaths? So there's, there's a lot of implications to oh, this that we need to look yeah. at a wider scale, I think. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, many of these uh, CO2 that has been uh, collected in previous years, of course, they're not going to go outside the planet. They're just going to stay on the atmosphere, right? Yeah, the that, ambient that, concentration yes. that we have. So, yeah. so like, but what, what I was saying with regards to that uh, video that I saw is at least for that period of time when, when there wasn't any activity going on, there were a smaller amount of concentration that are going up into the atmosphere, contributing to the greenhouse effect that, that uh, we are hoping to avert in the future. However, yes. you're right. Like uh, diet here in the Philippines, for example, uh, you know how Filipinos are. We love our rice and sugar. A lot of people, people love sugar. They love their pop. You, you know what, what pop is, right? Like uh, soda, pop. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Coke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Shameless plug there for the the guys, <laughs> <laughs> right? But anyways, hey. like yes, uh Filipinos love that and 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 that's where plus the, the activity of Filipinos as well is uh, it's only like recently we're in, you know, Filipinos are once again encouraged to go biking and exercising and think, you know, in in a way thank God for this pandemic because the uh, you know, sitting at home makes you bigger, quicker. So <laughs> well, I lost weight, you know, did you? I lost weight Good, during, congratulations. The, during the, the lockdown. The, the, the statistics from uh, government sources are 
that the average 2019 was 409.8 parts per million. Now, wow. uh, previously, in the last 800,000 years that have been measured, mm -hmm. uh, the concentration was highest around 300 parts per million. And it, it hovered from the Ice Age uh, uh, to, you know, that uh, uh, previous highest, which was about uh, 300,000 years ago, which was 300 parts per million. It was going up and down between the range of 150 but, to 300. But but that but that Only that's naturally in, occurring though. That, yeah, yeah, that 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 was natural fluctuation. Mm. I mean, there's always been natural fluctuations. Uh, when Mount Pinatubo blew up, yes, uh, there was suddenly loads of carbon dioxide carbon, yeah. and related emissions that was having an impact on the global balance uh, occurring. Uh, and um, you know, so there have always been natural fluctuations. Yes, but suddenly. In the last couple of hundred years since the Industrial Revolution, this has been shooting above 300, and uh, the 2019 average was about 400 tenths parts per million. So this is a huge change. Uh, it's been an exponential rise in the last uh, 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 30, 40 years. Mm. So this is very, very serious. These are more naturally occurring. For example, like a lightning strike hits uh, yeah. a, a bunch of trees in Africa, creates a forest fire, more more so like that uh, than, than, than human intervention. You have, like like you said, Mount Pinatubo. So we're, we're dealing with volcanoes that uh, started erupting all at the same time, which happens naturally. Uh, if, if you look at the history of the planet, we've had periods wherein volcanoes would just erupt at all, almost at the same yeah. time, which creates a greenhouse effect and then eventually which will create a, a uh, an, a, an ice age uh, until the earth warms up again, which is natural occurring. What is concerning, though, is the influence of humans in the last uh, 200, 30, 300 years, I would say, wherein, yeah. wherein humans are now m playing a bigger role in, in changing the, the, the climate of the planet because of uh, you know, like the way we manufacture, you know, responsible production, irresponsible production, I would say. Of course, back then, technology hasn't caught up. But now, there are a lot of technology already available wherein you can reduce your carbon emission. You can, uh, like I said, like it's, it's all about trying to determine your product stewardship and, and how you, you know, your, your manufacturing practices. Am I correct there? Yeah, so, so that is the main concern uh, with regards to human intervention and, and why Matthias is pointing out the, the parts per million uh, in terms of our carbon emissions because we have really significantly affected uh, the planet yeah. in terms of that. So, yeah, yeah I, I think we call it the Anthropocene, mm. which is basically the geological epoch, uh -huh. which was... Uh, triggered off when humans started to have this massive earth impact on geology mm. ecosystems and uh, climate change. So we call it anthropogenic climate change. Yes. It is the epoch of total human influence. Epoch, so, basically um, the age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an it's, age it's, in, in, in yeah. the Earth's history. And, yeah. and some people even call it, you know, the, the age of mass extinction of uh, biological diversity, where due to human influence as well, a lot of species uh, suddenly disappear because we are encroaching the natural balance that has been there is being pushed back. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the, er, the age of Anthropocene. Anthropocene. And ultimately, it is putting the human species at risk. Uh -huh. That is really, the, the earth is not really at risk. The earth will rebalance itself. That's what we have seen as well yes. during this lockdown. Suddenly, the, the natural balance of the earth is coming back. And mm. even animals were coming to places to <laughs> where, where, where they haven't been seen because suddenly the humans disappear. So we're not really... We, we don't have to save the planet. We have to save the human species uh, existence on the planet. But that is really what we are risking with our uh, um, action 
where we don't take care of the natural balance. But, but so here's I the think thing. that is one lesson we can learn as well from this pandemic. But here's the thing. It's, it's always difficult to balance because you have the concerns on, of economics uh, involved here as well. As humans, we have, uh, you know, we have always resorted into buying and selling of goods. Am I, am I correct? Like sure. we gone are the days of subsistence. I mean, there are still parts of the world that are still, you know, relying on subsistence farming or uh, hunting and gathering. But in in most cases, we're talking about mass production, industrial scale production of uh, basic necessities. Food, uh, clothing, and all that, and in 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 doing so, for example, like with transportation, uh, which is here in the Philippines at least is emitting a lot of uh, CO two into the in environment. We cannot just yeah, say I, and you know stop transportation because it's a, a necessity to get to to work. Now, like we have relied heavily in 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 the economics of of everything. Uh, technology, transportation, everything uh, runs through the the economy, and the whole point of of lifting these lockdowns is because the eco- the economy is is suffering. People are relying on on uh, in uh, prepackaged food. You know, like we somebody has to make them, so you need to have workers going there, and and people who who are unemployed. What are you gonna do to them now? Everybody's uh, everybody's economy right now is in what recession? Should I say that? Should we should we use that word? Uh, everybody, all the countries in the world have suffered economically, financially because of this crisis. So now, for example, uh, we have a situation where okay, we cannot lock down for for longer for longer now because people are suffering. Somebody has to start. You know, people start to to work. And you need the transportation and and factories, and once they open up again, then there you go. It starts to, you know, like the the carbon emissions uh, go up again. So what do yeah, you think about that's, that? That's yeah. the system that we have that we need to fine tune. Mm-hmm. At the moment, unfortunately, because of established ways of taxation and uh, rules of the market yeah. that are often influenced by fiscal. We often have the polluting solutions yeah. still being the choice mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. people have invested in them in the past. Uh, there is no incentive to upgrade, and in some places, fossil fuels have favorable tax conditions, and a lot of funding has gone into that because that was the way people used to think it's the only option to grow the economy. But things have changed. Uh, we can, for example, look at economic. Uh, uh, tax reform. We can look at making things that have less pollution to be more favorable. We can uh, add a CO2 tax. Mm. CO2 tax has been very beneficial in certain countries. If you then give the money back to the population, you give the money back to education, you give the money back to the people that you collect as a CO2 tax, and you make pollution more expensive and technologies that don't pollute cheaper then you get those positive effects on the economy. Yes, those people that are favoring the uh, highly polluting industries will be shouting, oh, you're damaging our business, but loads more jobs, we discussed that already in the last two uh, uh, sessions, will be benefiting from that. And I saw as well that UK, I think, has got a plan to invest seriously into the green economy, creating two to 300,000 new jobs. So this is really what, what we need to focus on now and make those solutions that have low pollution, practical terms here in the Philippines. How can we get those buses, those lorries, those chipneys that produce and two-stroke uh, uh, bikes here that I see in, in the city that I live? Mm. How can we incentivize those people without their livelihood being negatively impacted to shift but, to the cleaner vehicles? But, but I mean, yeah. But 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 before you answer that, like, wasn't there a, a debate uh, about that early? Was it early this year or last year? Where in the government is uh, going to encourage or I don't want to use the words uh, the word force, but there were. A lot of people who felt that they are being forced by the government to 
you know, like the, the, the owners of these buses, the old buses, to convert into new, more sustainable uh, buses. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, is that still a, a thing? Are we still pushing towards that direction? Or are we okay Actually, with uh, go going with the, the old ways of transport? Mass transport, I mean. If we would 100% stick to existing legislation, uh, already parts of industry might have been forced mm. to shift. Because I don't believe that all the vehicles that are on the road here in the Philippines comply with existing legislation. Yes. Some of the legislation is, is very solid, very tough. It's in the interest of human health, but maybe the operational enforcement of some of that legislation is a bit flexible. So sometimes legislation forces us. When I was a kid in Germany, you know, we got rid of acid rain because acid rain was destroying our pine forests. Mm -hmm. How did we get rid of it? By actually uh, tasking politicians to introduce legislation that was forcing coal-fired power plants and the chemical industry to put in cleanup uh, that was eliminating sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides, and other major pollutants that were going into the air and coming down as acid rain. Now, if this costs you as society in terms of health, in terms of damage to the economy and damage mm. to your assets, including the forests, 10 or 100 times more than the benefit that comes from those industries that are polluting, then you've got to act in the interest of society, in the interest of the planet, in the interest of hidden costs that society has to carry. I, then... I, yeah. Forcing those actors that are the source of that pain, the source of that damage, the source of that common mystery, misery, then you need to force them to make the change. But you need to force them in a way that supports the innovation, the upgrade. I mean, the Asian Development Bank has made a lot of money available mm. for electric vehicles, whether electric vehicles is the most a uh, 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 best way to do it or whether it's installing some kind of filters or catalyzers to the existing vehicles is the most effective way forward. That's another issue for debate. But you need to take action to clean up those vehicles that sometimes when you're on the road, you can see the cancer causing carbon particles coming out in huge smoke blooms. Uh, don't tell me they're complying with existing legislation, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they're still there on the road contributing to the problem that we have talked about, that we can't see the mountains anymore and that we can feel the pollution that is in our air that was gone during the lockdown. So, for example, like here in, the, uh, in our country, you can see all those, uh, what do you call them, LTO emission testing centers, right? You cannot get your vehicle uh, renewed, uh, the registration renewed, if you don't pass and you know everybody goes through it and everybody passes which is uh, you know questionable sometimes because you can see a lot of these vehicles tra public transport vehicles we call them jeepneys here and mm. buses also that are still spewing out uh, poisonous gases uh, so so I, I, I think on my end what my concern is given the economy given the low incomes here in this country and how hard it is to find employment yeah. and, and, and or, or any other sources of income, it's always a question of would you want to think about the future or would you want to think about your self-interest and, and money and, and income now? And even the jeepney driver, the, the bus driver needs mm. to think about now. But uh, politicians, donor agencies, uh, the general population, the universities, the academe. We need to come up with innovative models where the jeepney driver, if he switches to a cleaner solution, earns the same or more than he earns now with his current asset that mm -hmm. he has put a lot of his money into and he doesn't want to let go of it because that's his life saving, that's his daily income source, so we need to create transition models I, I, where there is no loss of income, where there is no loss of opportunity to have the money to pay for your kids' and, and, school fees. That and the, is an essential part of it. Otherwise, the, it will fail. And this is my concern here because I'm not sure about Germany, but for example, like in Canada, the transportation, public transport, 
like the local buses, the ones intercity or you know intermetro, are run by the city government or or yeah. what do you call this? The, the county, county government. HR, for example, in, in Halifax, HR, HRM, it's called Halifax Regional Municipality, runs the, the, the bus and transport operations in the city. The only thing that they cannot uh, run are the taxis. They're not, you know, like they, they have regulations, but they don't directly mm. have an influence on, on taxis. And also the Greyhounds, which is uh, like an intercity one, with, uh, you know, long distance, right? But within the city, it's the government's role to make sure that uh, transport is running uh, smoothly. Uh, they're financing the buses. They're the ones who uh, maintain the buses. Here in the Philippines, it's different. The government issues out franchises to public uh, transport companies or anybody in part, you know, just anybody who has a, a vehicle and wants to drive a jeepney. Everybody can, can, can have it as long as they pay the government, right? That's how it works, which creates. Yeah. But but the problem is, like you said, is is there a political will to standardize the entire operation? And the only way that I can see that is if government really intervenes and and local government uh, uh, local governments run the public transport w within their their city or or their their town or their province. That's the only way I can see it because we we've, we've seen it before, like the pro you know like private sector. They have like what they call this. Uh, uh, I forgot what it's called, but basically, your driver will will drive the, the the car or the jeep, and there's a certain cut there that they have to reach in order for them to take home something, right? Uh, but how about until we, we remove the whole that, thing? we have completely independent testing stations. The testing mm. stations test the pollution levels of the vehicles, uh, give them a rating. Based on the pollution level of your vehicle, you pay a tax. No, like like if your if your vehicle pollutes a lot, then you get top dollar tax that you have to pay. So mm -hmm. then, when you are thinking of getting a new jeepney or or getting a new vehicle, whether it's the owner driver or whether it's a company that does it or a a, a company that that runs a fleet of buses, you will choose the lowest emission vehicle because that's going to save you a lot of money in tax and operational terms. So we need to create the incentive for that transition. We need to price the pollution into the whole, not making everything mm. more expensive for people, but uh, making that the core focus of any uh, uh, vehicle approval or emissions or, or taxation that they have to pay. So there are business incentives to be as clean as possible, whereas currently there might not be. Looking at it from a different angle, Victor, are mm. you aware of the pollution that actually comes into your home? This is one thing I think that during uh, the lockdown, during the last few months, uh, a lot of people have started to look at what about the air quality inside of our homes, mm. inside of our offices, how can we understand what is good, what is bad? How can we understand as well what helps us to reduce the risk from bacteria during this pandemic uh, that we might find in the air? There is a lot of talk that uh, infection risk came through uh, airborne particles. How can we reduce that risk? And one thing I think that's not yet focused on enough is monitoring our air quality inside mm -hmm. of our homes. Yeah. I have an app here on my phone. I have my indoor air quality monitoring device here. Wow. Filipinos can be proud of it. This is co-invented by a Filipino. Wow. The device is called Yuhu. I'm using it here at home to monitor the air quality and to reduce the overall risks for the family. And mm -hmm. this is something that people haven't really yet uh, fully enough focused on as well in offices. One very good indicator, again, is CO2. Mm -hmm. Now, at home, you have much higher levels of CO2 than the 410 parts per million. Usually, a good one is still 600, 700, but it starts getting unhealthy 1,000 and above. Why? Mm -hmm. Really uh, difficult to be yeah. completely sustainable. But, you know, like, but what we're trying, like, in, in my case, like you, I don't have a vehicle right yeah. now, and I haven't had one for eight years now since I moved back here in the Philippines, because public transport is, uh, you know, like, 
good enough but at the same time it's not it's also not clean right so yeah. so i'm very careful with regards to vehicle if i really need one i'll just rent that's how i see it if i, I if i'm really desperate but uh, if not like i'll just use the cleanest bus that i know uh in the city which is victory liner that's what the one that we often use anyway because i've they used have, a couple of times before yeah, as well yeah because they have they a had, more modern fleet yes yeah, and and they, and their their and, and their buses are you know like you said modern and cleaner uh so more comfy you no know, more comfy as well so that's what i do but yeah i really don't have a clue with regards to that but you asked me that before and i and i mentioned something about human emissions right same yes, as cows, yes, right, we man. tend to we yeah. tend to do a lot of uh, inhaling and exhaling. So you're dealing with yeah. the, the exhale part there, and at the same time, uh, your digestion uh, can have an impact as well because humans tend to, you know, w without having to say the word, you know what it is. You know what I'm trying to get at, right? So the main yeah, the main thing here is we breathe in the oxygen, we breathe mm -hmm. out the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide the opposite yeah. of photosynthesis. Yeah. Photosynthesis takes in the carbon dioxide, churns out the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So as we are in enclosed environments, CO2 goes up, 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 up. If you monitor with an app your CO2 level going above 800 or a thousand, yeah. you know it's time to bring in fresh air. Yes. Because you're not getting any fresh air, and stale air is always higher risk in terms of health, and and even in terms of uh, you know the pandemic out there, and, and this it is increases a, the risk. And this is a concern that I have, like with offices, for example. I noticed that uh, offices like to here in the Philippines use a lot of air conditioning, right? It's very common; everybody has it. Yeah. But what air conditioning does, though, if not done if not used properly is it creates a situation where air becomes stale whatever the air quality is it, it just stays there so whatever allergens are in 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 that office just goes around and keeps going you're around in your you're breathing outdoor. yeah breathing it in and, and, and you know like and sharing it with other people sometimes it's always best to just open the window uh, from time to time not only are you saving electricity uh, it's it's you're also letting fresh air come in but how do you save electricity when you open up the window well you turn off the air conditioning right so <laughs> so uh, air conditioning is really expensive mm. like you know yeah. uh, I know in, in 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 some factories like they leave that air conditioning on for like 12 hours in a day right so Turn it, it off once in a while. Let let fresh air in, yeah. right? It it, it it also of course like it also depends on the system that you have, but yes. not everybody has a uh, uh, what do you call the air air exchanger? Uh, is that what it's called? Air like, handling units that bring in the fresh air. From yeah, outside. bring in from yeah. outside and and uh, releases all the 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 air that's already inside. Mostly we just have like the the air the big air con with the the one going outside. Uh, what, what do you call that kind of air conditioning? The the big one, the tower aircon with with a, a a line going outside where it it creates the condensation. But that doesn't really help because really you're you're just really uh what do you call this? Uh, letting the air that's already inside go around in circles within the office. So it creates a, a very very toxic environment without you even knowing it. Uh, when when somebody uh, uh, when someone's flatulence is is that something that you're familiar of uh, flatulence when I say flatulence because no basically it's, I'm not a native speaker we don't uh, be careful with the words you use if they're too sophisticated the green the, man won't understand oh okay okay <laughs> it's basically they're they're a more sophisticated word for the for the bodily ejections uh, from our tummies. Mm. Okay, so somebody's flatulence will just go around in circle in your room if you use air conditioning. So that's why I'm saying, like, open the windows, turn off the air conditioning. It helps uh, uh, reduce your electricity bill. Let's put it that way. At the same time, you're letting fresh air in. But having said that, it has to be fresh air. So if you live in, in, in an area where you, know, you have a lot of uh, belching pipes uh you know uh emitting a lot of smoke then maybe it's not gonna 
work out anyway. So go yeah. bigger, right? Or even worse, if your uh, air handling unit has the air inlet mm. close to the parking lot oh, where a lot yeah. of cars are, uh, then you have nitrous oxide emissions, maybe even carbon monoxide, which yeah. is very toxic. So, you know, but that is what you can usually figure out when you have uh, uh, air quality monitoring going mm -hmm. on, either one time or uh, continuous. When I first did it in Malaysia, the fresh air coming in from outside was more polluted than my air inside. inside I thought yeah. the air inside was quite stale, but I was living next to a very busy road. So the fresh air coming inside was not very good quality. Yes, yes. So at, if you don't measure, you don't know what's going on. And so uh, having that understanding and then taking appropriate action is important from a point of view of health and uh, overall risk. So that's highly recommended. And, I recommend everybody and, and start being, measuring your air quality to know what's going on. And being you know from Germany, I, I know that Germans really like to you know, like even it's, if it's winter, you guys tend to open the window just to let, you know, fresh air come in, right? It, it, that's a, a, a thing in, in Germany. Is that correct? Yeah, occasionally you yeah. need to, to get the fresh air in. And now the, the rules actually for schools are, mm. uh, I was told by my friend, every, yeah. you know, 15, 20 minutes, they have to open up the windows yeah. to get an air exchange going yeah. uh, to reduce the risk during uh, this time. So uh, people are starting to realize how important fresh air is and what quality fresh air brings yes. and what risk minimization it brings with it. So uh, bring the fresh air oh. on. But in an office environment here in our part of the world, you need to cool down the temperature first because your fresh air might be 28 or 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. It has high humidity. So you need to actually... If you have a proper air handling unit, you're increasing the uh, power consumption the more fresh air you bring in mm. because your fresh air needs to be uh, conditioned first. Anyways, like let's let's cut it short for now. Matthias has uh, has uh, some some other meetings that he has to go to and have uh, other work stuff to do as well. We'll catch you again next time. Uh, but before we do that, just a comment from T T G T G Laughlin. Uh, I, I okay. hope I got this name right. T.G. Laughlin. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. he said, interesting and engaging conversation covering power generation and fracking. You will learn quite a bit from this channel. But just speed through the, the part where we were talking about the hair and the lack thereof. He said. <laughs> so that's like the piece de resistance of that uh, yes, comment. Yes, yes. Mind yes, Gears yes, channel yes. said, Congratulations for this channel. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so we had like, a, a couple of uh, comments there. And, and I, you know what, like I encourage you guys to, you know, put in more comments. We're not, you know, like we're not like really like scientists me i'm not a scientist i'm more on the business side of things also and and mm. more of a marketing type of guy but i am very passionate about, about sustainability and and trying to find solutions to sustainability issues and that's why uh, that's how i found uh, matthias gelber and a good story earlier that uh, he was saying anyhow yeah and 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 thanks to uh, those guys that commented, mine is yes. actually my friend Renz. Uh -huh. He has a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So it's it's great that he supports us. And then Tom is is a, a very smart American guy who <laughs> is really active in the sustainability space. So he's a very sharp guy. That's why he tells everybody skip the hair part <laughs> and go straight into the technical part. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Tom, for your comments. And thanks, Victor, for uh, putting Matthias, everything you together. Know what? You looking know what? forward to next week, man. Yes, looking forward to next week. But you know what? Like, if if I shave my hair, uh, my head, I realize it's the title of this show is gonna become like two bald guys talking, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I commented to uh, Tom Laughlin. Uh, we'll see you again on the next episode. Don't forget subscribe, like, share, comment, the, all that good stuff. We need you guys to grow this channel. Thank you so much. All right, Change. cheers, man. Cheers. Change you starts soon. with you. Standing underneath the rose of trees, can see where the ocean meets the sky.